And if I'm not mistaken, we're live. We are live. See, no makey boco, which is Spanish. Hello, everybody. How are you? Nice to see you. Um, as always, it would be great if you could let me know, A, that you can see me, B, that you can hear me. That way I know it's working and everything will be awesome. Um, my name is Jamie Keddy. I'm the founder of Lesson Stream. We are a community of teachers with a passion for using story and storytelling in the classroom. Um, I like to do these lives on YouTube maybe about once a week, if I can. If you'd like me to notify you of the next one, before we go live, that is, um, click in the link below, sign up for the email, and you'll get a free lesson plan and everything. And uh, yes, if you're watching this in the future, if you're watching the recording, I hope you're having a very nice day. I hope it's a nicer day than this one. It's been a bit bit dull here in Barcelona. And uh, yes, we've got a very special guest today. Very special guest. Still waiting for that first person to say hello. In fact, I'm going to be the first person. So hello in the chat there. There's me. So waiting for that first person to say they can hear me and see me and everything. Very special guest today a friend of mine and a colleague and a fellow lesson streamer. His name's Steve Sinclair. And I wonder what Steve thinks of me sharing his image. What do you think of this? He looks like a giant bug. <laughs> this apparently is a, an icon that has become associated with artificial intelligence. I don't know if it's a sort of a representation of a neural network. Um, but... Uh, but um, yes, um, Steve's been in the membership for about a year, and I'm going to bring him onto the screen in just a moment, um, and let's see if this works. Bear with me. And here we are. And there's Steve. Hello, Steve. Hey, Jamie. How are you? All right. Thank you. How are you today? Yes, really well. That's actually the first time my face has ever been in, put together with the word intelligence. So thanks very much. Um, I, I'll, accept, <laughs> I'll accept the previous bug comment because I'm so happy about the second one. <laughs> yeah. Did you did, did you like the little icon there? Do you think what do you think of it? It's yeah. uh, they look very very it, serious in that. Yeah, very serious. Um, which is, doesn't happen very often. You look sort of like a cyborg, or at least <laughs> yeah. Yes. I've been and you look work. quite you look quite serious as well. You're right, I think, but in yeah. a good way. <laughs> maybe, maybe. And look, there's Alan, another one of our fellow our fellow lesson streamers who's just popped up. And he's the hello Alan. Lovely to hello. see you. Or Alain, because I think Alan's in France, aren't you, Alan? Yes. And uh, so it seems that it seems that we can be seen and heard. Um, unlike children, we should be both seen and heard. So 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 let me just explain what's happening here in our community lesson stream. Um, a few couple of months ago, we started to turn our attention to um, picture telling as part of the lesson stream story course. And picture telling is basically taking images, um, any image at all, photographs, pieces of art, design, and putting them into words. And uh, hello, Anna. Hello, Daniela. Lovely to see you. And um, and this was all very timely because what happened uh, is that basically artif artificial intelligence um, has gone visual. Um, and, and so it's kind of coincided with this unit in the story course and picture telling. And I kind of experimented with it a little bit before, but had found it quite complicated or not very impressive. And so I kind of put it on the on the back burner, as we say, you know, put it back on the shelf and forgot about it until one day um, Steve came along and suddenly wooed us all with not just artificial intelligence, AI generated images, but also his ideas for using it. And how long have you been experimenting with it for, Steve? Um, a couple of months, I guess. Um, it was directly inspired by your your picture telling class, um, so it was it was it was kind of because I, I teach online, so I don't have a classroom of people that can speak to each other. 
Um, so there's there's only there's only me. So I, I just wondered if if there was a a way to do my own kind of version of picture telling, um, mm. and, and that was what it was. And it, it began from there. Um, and really, the I think the, the the test of whether it was worthwhile was was how well the students took to it. Um, I get requests now. Please, can we do that? Um, because they 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 like to do it. It's a creative thing. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've been doing it. Um, I've done it now with all of my students um, at least once, um, and it's it's been kind of successful every single time. So apologies, I went a bit too fast there. We didn't even ask you where you are, Steve. Where in the world are you? Oh, sorry, I'm in Cambridge. In no, no, I'm sorry for not asking. So you're in Cambridge. And yes. so this is your, your con to so Steve, it's very interesting, has only been teaching for, for four years. Um, and um, Steve was, four years ago, he had a high-flying job working for a big company, 40 people um, working for Steve, and they decided to pack it all in and become a teacher. And so this is this is most of the way that you work. Your context is one-to-one -one and online, yeah. which is kind of very interesting because what you do, these ideas has come out of that um, sort of teaching yeah. um, approach that, well, the, the context that you're using. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's it, my, a lot of my students are quite young. Uh, my oldest at the moment is about 15, the youngest is eight. Um, so, so this this is directly in their wheelhouse. This is this is stuff. Well, when I look at it and go, oh, what? This is incredible. They look at it and go, oh, it's it's just stuff. It's just stuff that we have. <laughs> um, so there's there's much less amazement from them than there is from me. But but there is interest. There is they they have a really really good reason to use language and then refine it as we as we go along. Um, which I think is 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 quite a good thing. They 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 find ways to to tighten up their own language rather than me having to push them to do it. So it's yeah, as I say, it's 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 been it's been really really well received. Fantastic. Let, let's just show people what we can do. I mean, I'm interested. If you want to say in the chat, hi Daniel, hi John, um, hi Christina. If you want to just let us know in the chat if you've tried any. AI image generators already and how you find them. If you've never tried one, let me just show you what they can do. Um, here is a, a picture. I was just, you know, this is me experimenting. I've always wanted to visit a planet made of beer. This is a planet made of beer coming with its... I didn't ask for the pretzels, Steve. It's just that the artificial intelligence generator decided to give me pretzels until, you know, a couple of days ago, this image did not exist. And that's the case for all of these images. And um, then I decided to ask for a, a cathedral made of potatoes. I don't know if you ever visited a cathedral made of potatoes, Steve, but... Uh, I will. It's, it's on my I list. Recommend it. Great if you're hungry. And then, of course, uh, who'd, who'd want to miss out on a penguin? made of sausages <laughs> and i thought i thought it was maybe quite a nice language point here but then you can go backwards i thought so we had a we had a planet made of beer but what about a beer made of planets what would that look like and this is what i was trying to get to sleep and that thought was keeping me up so a, a beer made of planets obviously that's what it is it's a new kind of space beer made out of planet juice then we've had a cathedral made of potatoes but what about a potato made of cathedrals surely not but yes isn't that amazing and what i like about this so much is it's just a random potato made out of cathedrals in the desert <laughs> and of course we've had a a penguin made of sausages but what about a sausage made of penguins um not sure how successful that was but i quite like it and then you've all seen this film the king's speech and um, don't get confused between this film that's actually a real film and this new one that i've invented the king's peach so this is the kind of fun thing you can do with it i have to say that i'm kind of ambivalent i don't know how you feel about it steve i'm kind of ambivalent in two minds um about all of this you know i think it's going to change visual communication um mm -hmm. and it's going to offer a lot of ideas for teachers but it's surely got a dark side what do you think um i guess yeah i mean i guess if you're an artist uh which i'm not if you've ever seen my stick figures um, they're not even very good. Um, so yeah, I think if you're an artist, yeah, this is this is probably 
potentially a threat. I, I don't know. I always think there's there's two two ways of looking at it. We can look at AI and, and believe that it's going to replace all teachers one day. Uh, I don't think it will. Or you can look at AI and, and we can see what we can do with it. What what can we create with it? Um, in 30 seconds, you created um, a cathedral made of potatoes, which is which is mad. And this this thing didn't exist in the world mm. until this phrase popped into your head, and suddenly there it is. Um, so yeah, I, I yeah I I don't, I don't quite share your worries about it. I I think there's always a place for teachers, and there's always a place for for technology within the classroom. Um, you know, once once upon a time, people didn't have chalk to write on a blackboard. Um, <laughs> now, now we've got whiteboards with computers attached and everything else. So, I think there's there's if if it's used in the right way, I think there's there's a place for it. We'll find out, won't we? For yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, in a few years when we've been replaced by Terminators, then then we will know. <laughs> So hello, Alan, and hello, Gillian. Nice to see you. And Alan's been dabbling with, with Dali with a purpose, it looks like. And hello, 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 Fatty. So what we've got for this session, what, what we're going to do is I've taken eight images, um, and these are all images that, that Steve has been working with. And we're going to work through these eight images, demonstrate this idea of AI picture telling, which is just one of many, many ideas that you can use for this um, and get Steve to comment on what he's been up to. How does that sound with you, Steve? Yeah, sounds good. Look, we've got a few other Lesson Stream members here. We've got Alan, we've got Hannah, and we've got Daniel and, uh, and Daniela and John. So, so number one, image number one. Now, let, to, just to contextualize this, some of you may have been at... Um, the previous lesson stream live this time last Friday when it was all about humanistic, um, humanist photography. I was showing some photographs by Robert Duano from this book. And one of the photographs that we focused on was on page 90, a photograph taken on the Pont des Arts in Paris. Um, and it's of two artists at work. Number one is a painter. And the other one, of course, is the photographer himself. So this is the image. And so we'd been working with this image in picture telling, and sorry, picture telling, working with this image in lesson stream. And um, we had, um, there's a lesson plan based on this, a lesson plan that I kind of went over with during last week's lesson stream live. And then Steve, I don't know if this was your intention, Steve, but you kind of pranked me. <laughs> you kind of, you kind of pranked me because what, what Steve did was he shared uh, an image that I'm just about to show you, this one right here. <laughs> and you can kind of see the similarities, can't you? It's kind of similar but different and also yeah. not quite right. So what's all this about, Steve? Yeah, so, so I had the idea... Um, I, I really like the, the kind of the humanistic um, elements of this because there's 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 a lot there when there seems to be not very much. Um, there's a lot of background when we finish with the foreground, and I kind of like that for the students. So yeah, so I, I tried to get the idea um, that the I think I said the dog was looking interestingly at the camera, um, <laughs> and the and the man was was the man then is is. Slightly looking around the corner, trying to trying to look at the at the guy painting, um, which I I think I put into the description, but was then completely ignored uh, by the AI. Which, as we've reflected before, definitely happens at times. It seems to have its own own will. So this is so this is we're going to show you later at the end how to create the images, but we want to show you the examples first. And then later, we're going to actually, in case you don't know how to use it, we're going to show you how to actually make use of, of, of the AI generator that, Steve, you used for this one, which is DALI. Um, and am I right in thinking that this is the, I think this is the instructions that you and your yeah. student, your one-to-one -one student, you teaching online, you kind of co-constructed this description, and then you put it into the AI image generator, 
and that that's basically what you got. Mm. Uh, that's that's the that's the way it worked, is it? That's so it, yes. we've got there's a man in the foreground. He has a black coat and a grey trilby hat, leaning to look at what a man is painting a few meters away. The man has a black and white Jack Russell dog in the lead. The dog is looking intently at the person taking the picture. The painter is dressed in black trousers and a light shirt. He has an easel and is painting next to a fence that looks like part of the bridge. In the background, bare trees. What's interesting about this, though, Steve, is because the, in the lesson plan, um, there's a bit of a trick, isn't there? Students are supposed to draw the picture for themselves, and usually yeah. they include the photographer in the painting. But Dali has not fallen for that. Mm. Yes. Yeah, no, you're right. Interesting, yes. Yeah, it, it, you're absolutely right, yeah. But it is, it is, it is interesting at times, the things it picks up. Because we, I think this, this description was the second or third time we tried it. And we were trying to get the the distance correct, and it it wouldn't. It would always put the guy right next to it. Um, mm. It got the dog pretty well. The dog, the dog, <laughs> the dog looks great. And I think this is a really important thing because we spoke about this, and you said that your kind of initial um, your initial aims were to was about accuracy and getting the getting students to be as accurate as they possibly could in their picture yeah. description, mm -hmm. putting that into AI, but then it doesn't it is kind of not so important because AI has this tendency to completely ignore your instructions, which has happened here, hasn't it? Yes, yes definitely. Yeah. As I said, we 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 tried to bring depth to the picture by saying it was it was a few meters away and it and it wouldn't do it. Um, but kind of as, as we said before, if if this is a, even if when it goes wrong, we, it, it's still worthwhile because we can we can recognise okay the, the preposition was right, but it's 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 been ignored, um, mm -hmm. or how can we, or how can we fix these the the problems we have with with describing space um, to, to an AI this, and that's, that's really, um, a, a challenge to do. So, um, doing this very much relies on getting prepositions correct and accurate, and then definitely adjectives as well to make sure that we describe things as accurately as we can. Um, and it gives, it gives students a real, a real need, um, rather than being pushed by a teacher to describe things properly, correctly, accurately it gives them a need to do it because what they know that if they do that then the next one the next picture will change and it will reflect what they've done so there's a there's a real almost instant reward that they they get <laughs> for, for, for being accurate much more so than than you know teachers like me complaining in their ears because they've used um something that's not quite right um so i think as i say the that, that picture was tough, uh, much, <laughs> much more difficult than it looked to begin with. So it wasn't just the distance, was it, between the painter, the painter and the easel and the passerby? It was also the fact that the, the, the passerby was not looking at the painting. He was looking in the same direction yes. as his dog, yes. wasn't yes. it? So yes. it, this is what I find. You, you're, trying, you're trying to be as, as simple and concise as possible, mm. and yet the, the machine just will not pay attention to you. No. In some respects, it's a bit like a student, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, very much, yes. <laughs> Hello, Ellie there. And uh, there's Natal Natalie saying exactly the same, that uh, it tends to ignore parts of your, your description. Yeah, Natalie, don't, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. It's not. It's not you. It's it's everyone. So let's move on to image number two then, and let me just tell you what this was about as part of the course and lesson stream for those teachers who want to get involved. And Steve is one of those. My um, task was just to very very simply share an interesting image with all of us, and um, that has teaching potential. That really was more or less what it was. Maybe another way of saying it would be share an image with a story. And the one, if we go back the days before artificial intelligence, Steve, the image that you shared um, was this one right here. Yes. And tell us 
what's going on here and why you like this picture? Uh, this is this is my favourite one. I, I um, as an introduction to some lessons, I wanted to get some old pictures um, of things that don't happen anymore. Um, so, so this this is a picture. This was taken. Um, I think this is New York. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, and this actually happened for about ten years, from some somewhere around the fifties to somewhere around the sixties. Um, people people would make swimming pools. Um, and they would tow them around on the back of trucks. Um, and, and this just seems like madness. Um, so, so we have lots and lots of fun in the class with my students. Kind of, we start talking and, and we, we kind of just explore what would, could this happen today? Um, and they go, well, no, because there'd be about a million cars in both directions. Um, oh of course, when, when, when this was taken, and even when I was young, there, there just weren't so many cars in the world. And so this, this was possible. Um, yeah, so, yeah, then we, then we talk variously about how, how do you think they get this thing round the corner? What would happen? Um, and there have been suggestions that some of the people might fly out at the corner. And I said, no, 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 I'm sure they'd get out before it starts moving. Um, so yeah, this 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 is is my absolute favourite one because it happened. It's it's not a pretend thing. It's a real idea. Someone woke up one morning, they got a spare truck, and they've gone. It's hot today. What should we do? I know. And and off they went. And this and this kind of legend was born. And we're still we're still now talking about it in 2023, which is just the best, right? Yes. So we've all heard of a street party, but this is a street pool party, isn't yes, it? Amazing. And then you you used the same image for the yes. basis of an of an AI picture telling. So you did the same thing with your students. Mm -hmm. You worked together on a descriptive text for DALI, the AI image generator. And uh, should we show everyone what you got? Yes, this this was pretty good. I like this one. <laughs> a, bit, a bit more popular in this picture than real life. Um, I, now, there's a there's a sort of task that jumps out at me when I see this image. I think maybe maybe this maybe have been your idea actually, Steve. It's a classic sort of way to use images to get students to speak. What's wrong with this image? Yes. yes. Yeah. And I can see quite a lot. <laughs> yes. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sure how those two trucks um, could make this thing work. Yeah, there's, there's, you're right. There's, there's quite a lot. Uh, there's a, but, but there's a, there's a lot that's right. If, if we remember, AI has never ever seen a swimming pool in the street. I'm sure. Um, you know, maybe it kind of knows what what a New York street would look like. It's, it's got it more or less perfectly. The, you know, the red brick buildings, um, and the concept of the the crowd of people <laughs> around a swimming pool in the middle of the street. It's, it's kind of got it. But this look, this looks because as you're absolutely right, it completely lacks human intuition, doesn't it? And that's often the reason for the kind of irregularities or kind of um, the sort of what's the word I'm looking for when two things don't come together. Um, that world will come to me. But you mentioned the street. I mean, I think your image, your original one, was sort of Bronx or or Queens, mm, maybe, somewhere yeah. residential yeah. anyway. And this one seems to be the sort of downtown financial <laughs> district. <Yeah. laughs> and Christina says their image is a bit blurry. I'm hoping that's just because of your connection and not because of our images, um, although I can't be sure. But I don't know if you can see. That's right, Daniel. Thank you so much. Incongruous or incongruity. Yes. I think I think it creates these kind of un unintentional incongruities because of its lack of human um, experience. I always have a problem with that word. I don't know why. So thank you. I don't know how you read my mind. Um, if you, and also, you, I don't know if you can see, but there's people standing in bathing costumes. There's about, I don't know, 30 people in the pool and maybe 500 people in the street and they go right down to the, the sort of horizon, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine it's, it's just pulled up and people are going, what, have you heard? And, and they're, they're, they're running to this thing. 
<laughs> I, was, I was very panicky. I, I, I've not checked closely. I was very panicky that they were all, were all wearing swimming costumes. Uh, my students tend to be quite young. I didn't want to shock anyone. I think we're okay. I think you can zoom in, and <laughs> I've done so, and I think we're safe. And if we're not safe, they're sort of amorphous, and there's no, <laughs> yeah. nothing rude to be seen. <laughs> yes. So yeah, weird ninety. Yeah, with two sort of two uh, end two. Um, what do you call those parts? My mind's gone blank again. What do you call the part of the lorry that's got the engine and that pulls? <laughs> Help me out, Daniel. And uh, yeah, it was good. Um, right. So let's move on to image number three, then, shall we? Image number three, and um, this was interesting because again, this was part of another. I wonder if anyone here can name the artist. This was part of a lesson stream lesson plan and um, makes use of a, of, it's a very simple idea is taking a, a, an, an image like this, a piece of art and to put into words what you see, making use of the visual narrative there. And once again, Steve decided to, to, to put his uh, AI touch to it. That's right, Daniel, Georges Seurat. <laughs> This was his masterpiece, um, and it's massive as well. It's very, very big, um, and pointillism, isn't it? So tell us what you did with this. Was it the same as before, Steve? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this this was with some uh, more advanced students. Uh, I wanted to sort of kind of give them something that, that they could get their teeth into. Um, because a lot of the time, a lot of the pictures that I use, the, the foreground is, is very simple. And then there's lots going on in the background. Um, this picture, there's just lots going on. Um, almost too much to go on to, to kind of really describe it very well. Um, although what came out was was really, really, really pretty good. Um, I was really quite pleased with with what they, they came up with. Which there's, there's is... two, two Chinese girls help me with this one. Okay, and this is what we got. Yeah. What do you think of this? I think it's not bad, right? Um, <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. As as you've as you've rightly pointed out, there's there's a few people paddling possibly where they shouldn't be. Um, but again, you know, as as a as something that's been created from nothing, something that's that that a few seconds before this, literally a few seconds, this did not exist, and suddenly there it is. Um, it's, it's great. It just, it really is. I'm, I'm not sure if this is the first one or the, or the second draft. We, we go, we go, generally what we do is we'll, we'll, we'll do a rough draft first and then we'll go back um, and try to tighten it up um, in different ways. But yeah, I thought, I mean, this, this looks like art, right? It's not like <laughs> I'm going to leave this open to the chat. I wonder what everybody thinks. We've got Fatty. Uh, it says she likes it. Daniela says she likes it. Yeah. Um, I find it quite scary. I find I I have these sort of visions of what it would be like to be kind of transported into an AI world when this is what the things are like, and you get these. It, it reminds me. I don't know if you watched Rick and Morty. Mm -hmm. There's an episode when they get transformed, transported into a um, a simulator which is a, a giant computer's attempt to reconstruct reality according to what it thinks it's like. Yeah. And everything seems to be right, but it's the details that doesn't quite get yeah. right. Like, for example, the people nonchalantly <laughs> walking through the river, and these are two identical dogs walking purposely from one place to another without, I don't know, without owners perhaps. Yeah. Everything's so pristine and everything so immaculate and everything quite kind of kind of eerie in my mind yeah. and and i i i have to i mean I, I i right now i enjoy it that's for sure i enjoy it. i enjoy the sort of eeriness of it and i do enjoy the, the sort of emotion yeah. but at the same time um i think it's a great question steve mm. is it it's art yeah, is it? Yeah, is, is it? Oh, I don't know. I, as, as I as I say to everybody, um, it's much better than stick men that I produce. 
Um, and if actually, if you look in the background, I've only just noticed this actually. You look in the background, you've got the cathedrals and stuff, but right on the far bank, he's actually just put in some really little figures on the, just in front of the bridge on the far bank, which is yes. just, it's just, it's the sort of thing someone would do if they were finishing a painting. And, and you know, you, you can imagine the last brush strokes of, um, of a magnificent painter just finishing it off, the little details. Um, I don't know. Yeah, is it art? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Daniel Daniel says something interesting. I've been thinking about it a bit myself that it hasn't been created from nothing because he's getting guessing that Surat's work is all the internet. So presumably it's drawing the very work you're asking it to create. And that that I think that's very possible. Um and I've also done some experiments, not with this one myself. I've not tried this one myself, like you have, Steve, but with others. I've used um for example, it's certainly aware of, of pieces of art, iconic pieces of art like the Mona Lisa and Munch's Scream. Yeah. Um, and does that influence it? I think we'd have to go back to your source text, Steve, to find out exactly what Steve did. I don't think Steve ever mentioned Seurat. Did you even no. mention Paris, Steve? Because that doesn't look like Paris to me. I don't think. I did, I, I'm not sure I knew that the original was in Paris. Um, I certainly didn't use the painter. I think I think we gave it the style. I'm, I'm pretty sure um, uh, we used. I told him it was pointillism, um, but that that was that was maybe all. And, and perhaps I mean Daniel's right. This yeah, this this doesn't just just exist in the world. It's, it's been in, it's been taken from somewhere. Um, then again, all is all art not inspired by by something else? Is you know, there's there's not many truly original things in the world. <laughs> Well, that's a, that's a, after copied by someone else. Definitely interesting. Definitely interesting sort of issue as part of that question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. For Dan, for Daniel's Daniel's point, what I would I think we'd have to see the source text to see if there's anything that would allow AI to make a connection with the text and the original painting. So I think that's what we'd have to go back to. But if you at the very end. What I'll do is I'll show you a little experiment that I used to to actually see how aware um, Dali is of pre-existing paintings and whether it can be triggered in this way. Because something I quite uh, I quite uh, think is very interesting. Alberta says that uh, the shadows of the people in the river are different from those standing on the field. Oh, yeah, they are. You're the right. Painter, are those shadows? Are, however, are those shadows are reflections. Ah. Uh, because those are those would be reflections, wouldn't they? Like a mirror, shadows from the sun is. Um, but that's uh, maybe me being a smarty pants. Sorry. <laughs> um, and Gillian says, "Don't worry, Gillian. We'll we'll be doing the technical at the end, so we'll be showing you how to do this at the end." Let's move on, unless you're to image four. Did you have anything to say about that one, Steve? No, no, that's that's fine. That's good. So image four, whoops, image four. Um, now this is an interesting one, Steve. Uh, I'm going to show everyone this image. Um, and now uh, what's interesting for me is, is the why you chose this picture. Why? Um, I've, I've been kind of interested for a while. So I teach online students um, at Christmas. I'm having a guy to stay for two weeks. Uh, and what I want to do is take him around Cambridge, where I live, um, and we're going to recreate, we're going to try to recreate some pictures from the past. Um, so this this is Cambridge. This is um, a quite well-known spot in Cambridge or quite a well-known area. Um, and this this picture, I think, is maybe 100 years old, maybe, maybe a little less. I'm not quite sure. It's old anyway. Um, and it's, the area's kind of changed quite a lot. Um, I liked it because in the foreground, I, I, I taught, teach my students foreground and background. That's how we kind of get into this. Uh, so usually I put a box around the boy and say, "This is what's the picture of? It's a boy fishing. Fine. And that, in some ways, that's all you sometimes get. And I say, yeah, okay, but what else can you see? Oh, well, there's, um, there's, a, there's a strangely shaped um, house and there's a, there seems to be a boy running in the background. Um, and then and then we start to think about, well, where's the boy? Where's the house? Um, can we describe this properly um, or sort of more accurately? What time of year is it? Which is 
unbelievably hard in a black and white picture. Um, and one of my students said, it's April, Steve. Confident. Mm -hmm. I go, okay, why do you think it's April? He says, well, the trees have got leaves on them. Okay, yeah, good. Um, and the boy's got a big coat. So it must be, it must be a little bit cold. Um, I didn't have the heart to tell him that that could have been any time during the British summer. Um, but it was, it was, it was a very good guess. And it, 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 it kind of draws, it draws out these connections. It draws out higher order thinking from people and from what's a really, really simple picture. It's a boy fishing. That's what it is. Um, actually sitting on a bridge. What kind of how, bridge? How far away do you live from this spot? Oh, um, a few miles. Um, not, not millions of miles, but a few miles. Yeah. And so this came from a, a resource of, of, of pictures from 100 years ago in some cases, you said. Yes, yes. Old, old pictures of Cambridge. I've, I've been kind of collating them. Um, and we're, we're going to go out at Christmas and, and take a few. So we had a, a, a webinar in, the, in the, the Lesson Stream membership, in the fishbowl, as we call the, the community. And a number, number of us got together and Steve talked us through this approach and we got everybody to to create a description of this picture and then put it into DALI. And uh, let's just go through some of these. So, um, oh, that's, I like that. You also shared the, the, a photograph of the, the yes. same place today. Did you see that yeah. photograph on the right? Yeah. And so um, this was uh, the first one. This I, I forget whose descriptions, whose texts these were. Apologies if this is yours and you're watching. We've not credited you. But... Uh, one of the things you might see here um, is that everything becomes a bit more sort of, is the word buconic, sort of style, just sort of idealized in a sense, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Beautiful and perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and is that is that even a photograph? I think it is. Well, I mean, it, it's yes, not a photograph, yeah. obviously. It's been created by AI. It's a yeah, it's a pseudo photograph. So it's yes, gone from the same there are some photographs that he creates, which are more more like a photograph than this one. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah, an old mill. So an old mill seemed to be quite sort of a key phrase in in the mm. meaning that is created here. Um, also, this is the next one. This is I find that. What do you think that building, Steve? <laughs> Yeah, what, what did they? Uh, they call it a big farm building. There you go. It's a it's a big farm building. Um, mm. Again, this so so. It, I think it's it's really good to, to look at what went well. Um, so he's um, he's definitely there's a there's like there's a river on the left. Well, yeah, uh, he sit on top of a wall. Yeah, this is that's in the original picture. A big big farm building. Right, it's not. Um, it's not got a thatched roof. Um, and whoever did this, they haven't told him, told the um, AI where this building is completely, have they? On the right of the picture. Oh, no, behind the boy. No, I take it back. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's ignored that, that piece that is behind the boy. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's got some, it's, it's got more, I guess you, you probably could say it's got more right than it's got wrong in terms of working from the description. And you mentioned where as well. And I was wondering if there was an instruction in the description to give the specific location, you know, 1940s England, because to me that looks like a sort of a, a, a farm building that you might would expect to get on the other side of the Atlantic. Yeah. Um, doesn't it? Um and so that there's the, and also the one thing you really you can sometimes see when you're trying to reconstruct the image there's often an, an issue of genre so this is much more a sort of painting isn't it or a piece of yeah I don't yes. know. yeah it's, it's, the ai has been left to its own devices in terms of what it is um the, the previous one was a black and white photo we told it this this one i don't think hmm. It is yes, yes. It's black and white. Oh, black and white picture, right? So it's not. A, it doesn't. It's not being told it's a photo. So it, so this is why it's not. It's not made it so photographic. It's made it more more as you rightly said as a as a kind of a stylized um, picture. What else have we got here? We've got this is an interesting one. 
I was wondering, and this is for everybody, I was wondering why this one is so different to the other ones. And in my mind, there's one word here that seems to be kind of pushing the the the, the mood. Um, and because I'm saying this, this is sometimes what happens, I've found. You might spend a lot of time on the text, but there's certain words or phrases that will become mm. more sort of robust than others. We'll have more will give more meaning than other words. And I don't, this is just a speculation here, but and what, I wonder if you'd agree with me. What, what would be the key word or phrase for you, Steve? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm look, it's, it's actually, it's, it, this is pretty good. This, this should be way better than it is. You're right. Is it, is it the funny shaped building or? It's, yeah, to, to me, it, to, oh, where's the funny? Yeah, the funny shaped building for sure, because some, some of the other ones we got out of this were quite, very, were, very strange, sinister-looking buildings as well. I was I was speculating. It's only a speculation. The word concrete mm. might have a strong bearing. Yeah, maybe, maybe it pulls it to a, a certain time. Um, yeah, to think if there's a con if there's a concrete bridge, when 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 were we building concrete bridges? Well, not quite sure when they began, but yeah, <laughs> the, the, bridge, the bridge in the picture is a, a brick-built one. So yeah, maybe yeah, maybe it would have put a timestamp. Based on that, but it's a sort of image of decaying suburbia and a, a sort of almost, I mean, post apocalyptic almost. <laughs> but I, I don't know, are these boys fishing for survival? Who's I don't know. This is what's gonna happen when the AIs take over. This, this is where we'll be. I would love to do a repeat the, the, the generation with removing the word concrete just to yeah. see if. I wonder, but in my mind, this is this is actually an incredibly interesting sort of experiment and in, in storytelling because often when you're telling a story, and you're especially when moments when you're trying to communicate a certain image, um, in your story, uh, paint a picture, describe a scene, you know, sometimes you can go into too much detail. And I think bad writers do that. They give, they think they've got to give far too much detail about the scene that they're describing. And good writers know that sometimes just a, a set of two or three words or phrases that can spark the image in the reader or the listener's mind. And I think this, to me, might be a, a, a very sort of graphic demonstration of that. Mm. Um, you talk about yeah. a concrete jungle, which is a sort yeah. of phrase which is overused to the extent where it's maybe I wouldn't want to use it myself. But there was a time when a concrete jungle, I don't know where that came from, would have been uh, a very uh, sort of uh, an incredible sort of way, incredible phrase to, to create an image in a listener or reader's mind, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm yeah, going off the one really here, Steve. Crazy. I talk to my students about trusting the reader, trusting that the reader will know something, but don't trust them too much because they, they need they need to they need some information, as you said, to, to build the picture. Um, mm. and you're right, yeah, it's it's a, it's an interesting one. Yeah. I think if if you, you played around with this a little bit, you could change it radically. because uh, most most everything I think in that description is 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 more or less spot on. It's, it's actually very good. Mm. Oh so let's go the thing this is the last one. I think this is Again, this is very much what we were saying. You mentioned this before, Steve. What was it you? The, the problem. The problem here is it, the first. The first two words. It's winter, um, and of course, well, it's, it's it snows all winter, um, <laughs> and so that that's it. And it's 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 again this this interpretation for the AI. It's winter. Bang. Ah, oh, right. Well, it, it must be snowing then. How can I show it's winter? Um, any number of ways, but this this was the way. Yeah, that's it's like before. If concrete was a dominant word, then winter here is a dominant yeah. word. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's not even a it's not even a photograph. It's I mean when when I've put this description a number of times, it always seems to give sort of chocolate box. Mm. Um, you know, idealized and um, beautiful, <laughs> lovely images. Of, nice, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay, let's move on and go to image number five then. What's image number five, I wonder? Um, yeah, this was interesting. I loved this, Steve. This was also um, another photograph from, yeah. from the same 
um, series. This is also in Cambridge. Mm-hmm. A, a car hanging by a rope from a bridge. Which bridge is that? Do you know which bridge uh, it is? This is the Bridge of Sighs on the Cam. All uh, right, and tell us it's what's going on here. The most famous of all the bridges. And how did this situation come to be? So um, there's a there's a famous story. So because because I spend so much time um, with students going up and down the river on punts on the, the these flat boats we have in Cambridge, uh, I get to hear this story over and over and over. Uh, this is my favourite one. So this this I think I I'm gonna say it was somewhere around the fifties. I think when when cars were very very new, and you had to be kind of rich to have a car. Um, the the chancellor or dean of the of the, the college got a, got a new car. Okay, he's very very proud of his new car. No one else has got a car um, almost in the town. Um, so the students thought it would be hilarious to steal the car. Um, they put it on two punts. Okay, these these are quite quite kind of wide boats. They're 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 they're, they're big. They could hold a hold a car, and they did. Um, and they they pushed this this car down hoisted it up um, and left it hanging overnight. And the, the, the dean or the chancellor walks out in the morning, Where, where's my car? Um, and then, then the, the legend kind of begins. So um, he, he sees the car. A student, yes. He's, <laughs> he sees the car and all the students are, are kind of looking around the corner. Oh, what's, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? Um, and legend has it, he starts to laugh. Um, and he he recognises what a good prank is because he used to be a student himself. Um, so he says, right, okay, that's funny, um, but my car's in the river. Um, so I'm going to London for two or three days. If my car is back on my drive when I come back, no more will be said. There will be no more investigation, nothing else, and we will just chalk this one up to experience. Um, and he went away. He came back. His car was there, um, and the, the legend is born. Now I don't know if it's true, um, but it's a great story. And the the first part of it definitely happened. This is definitely the the um, the most important guy in the in the college. It's definitely his car, and and they definitely hoisted it up uh, on this kind of old and quite fragile bridge, which you're not allowed to walk over now. Um, Such so a good story. Yes, it's great. As I, as I say, is it is it true? I hope so. I'd like it to be. We've we've got about five lesson plans and lesson stream that make make use of stories about practical jokes and pranks. I can feel another one coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is great. But I, what, when we went over this last time when we did the webinar, um, I don't think you mentioned the the punts. So, and I had been thinking how did they do this it hadn't occurred to me that's how they did yeah, it they, yeah they floated so they, down yeah floated down and hoisted flo- it up i bet I tell you what i bet it wasn't spotless by the time he, he got it back <laughs> no, no probably not but what was interesting was that you mentioned that no matter how many times you tried you were never able no, to get not close dally to even come close to no. a car hanging from the fridge wouldn't, wouldn't have it wouldn't have it i i tried um, and then I decided I was probably inadequate, um, and we got my students to try as well, and it's just a disaster. I think this this one was about the best we ever did. Um, and it's not it, bad, it, is it? It's not terrible. If you look, the, the, if for some reason, it's it's destroyed the, the tyres at the back and kind of put them floating on the river. Um, I don't quite know why, but, yeah, we, we tried and tried and tried with this, and it, 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 just, it just resisted. Weird. Uh, so got, weird. It it's like this is this is this is what you find. Dali is capable of imagining and giving visual life to uh, a potato made of a a cathedral. <laughs> this is an, if in case you're late to this, this is what, a potato made of a cathedral. However, it's incapable of visualizing um, <laughs> and. <laughs> A car hanging from a bridge. <laughs> this this was the worst one of all. Yeah, a complete disaster. Mad. So yes, it's. It, I think it, we're learning that it's really good for some things, 
and yes. not so good for others. But I, and I think we said this already, but I think it's worth saying again that when you when we when you first got involved, it was for you. It was about accuracy of the mm. description, getting students to relay the, the information so that yeah. Dali can we can reconstruct it. It was about accuracy, but then you later realize it's about learning how DALI works and how artificial yes. intelligence yes. works. Yes. And I've learned a lot from, from these ideas that you've been sharing, Steve. Yeah, it's, it's, good, it's good to reflect. I, I think in the world we live in now, so particularly now where, where things are very fast, we don't always spend time reflecting. We don't always spend time looking back and saying, how could, what, what's gone wrong? How could this be better? Um, and, some, and sometimes you just have to admit defeat, as in this one, we just go, all right, okay. We're, we're not we're not going to get this, but but the reflection part of it, the 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 efforts that we then made to, to try to 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 make it work again, um, we're doing this with second language learners, and and they're they're in the moment. They're not really they're not really thinking about the language they're producing. They're just producing language because they need to to try to get this thing to work, um, and and that on its own um, is 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 worth the time it takes to to kind of set things up. Mm, yeah yes the next one steve is the one that i think is funniest this next image is image number six remember we get eight images to go through here and this is uh <laughs> this is now we were just chatting about this before and when you were using this with your student you said that you weren't actually aware that this couple we're looking through a hole in a fence or a gap in between the, the fence at a circus. No. As far as you were aware, they could have been looking at anything. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And so, so you, am I right in thinking that you used this image um, for the same the AI picture telling work to the student, yes. created a text. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes, exactly what we and, did. Yes. Yes, we, we did that. And as you're right, you're absolutely right. I didn't know. I thought this was just two people looking through a hole in a fence. Um, and as I said to you earlier, I, I imagine one of them got there first and said, hey, hey, come, come look at this. What could it be? Um, and we and we you know, we spent lots of time talking about curiosity and 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 how how and when they would they would be able to sort of peel themselves away from this this amazing thing that's happening beyond um i didn't realize it was a circus which which kind of which kind of spoils the the story that i'd made up in my head uh, but now well, it actually makes some sense just out of interest if it's black and white what made you and your students decide that she's wearing a long red dress <laughs> Yeah, it's a very good question. <laughs> I honestly, I don't know. I, I, I allow, I allow any, any kind of leap of, um, leap, leap of imagination. Yeah, anyway, yeah, wait, wait, till you, wait till you see this. This made me laugh. I thought this was very funny. This is what Dali, in response to that description, that prompt. <laughs> this is what this is what Dali gave back. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't understand what a hole in the fence is. Yeah. Nor, might, nor does he understand what a red dress is. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, John's just asked a question. Um, you can, you can, yes, you can sign up and pay. You can sign up and for the chat GTP four and Dally's included. But there's also John. There's a way to get it for free. Uh, I think you use the free version, don't you, yes. Steve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I do too. So yeah. we'll show you this in just a moment. Um, we're getting towards the end of the... Uh, very quickly, um, in image number seven, this was um, actually, again, this was last... This was my attempt. Just very... This was my attempt. This was what we did last week. I um, Or rather, there's a video I made, a video which is... Uh, no, I'm jumping too far. Where's the video? This one here, which is, um, yeah, this one. I made this video, The Perfect Time for Humanist Photography, in which I um, talk about the image in the front of this book. Sorry, I've gone too fast here. I've got muddled up. I'm going to go back. Made a mistake. What am I looking at here? This is image number seven. This is the one, yes. Yeah, this is the image in the book. Um, this is a, a game that everyone's played. Have you ever played this game, um, Steve? 
<laughs> ring and run. Extensive. No, knocked or bunk, we used to call it. What did you call it? Knocked or bunk. Knocked or bunk. Or not, knocked yeah. or ginger in Essex, by the way. I don't wow. know. Yeah. That that implies there's no ringing of bells. No, no. Just we... knocking on doors. It never occurred to me. I always thought you, knew, you could only ever play it with, with houses with, with, oh. with bells. There was... This is wherever there are doorbells or wherever, wherever there are doors leading to residential places, there are naughty children playing this game, which is a knock mm-hmm. on the door or ring the bell and run away. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've, I love this photograph. I really do. It's just a, it's an action photograph. And so I, I, this was my attempt to, um, to, to, to Dali-ize it, to artificial intelligence-ize it. Photograph of seven naughty schoolboys ringing a doorbell and running away. A little girl in the street watches them disapprovingly. Is that what it was? Yes. Um, I think this is this was really bizarre because this is what I got from it. And just, this is not a photograph. Um, again, it just sometimes doesn't listen. Do you think this is it's quite sinister, Steve? I certainly do. Look at her faces. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, they. Yeah, you want you wonder what their 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 intentions going to be straight after this. Um, and I, and again, it's just not. Uh, it's just lacking human intuition. I've played this game so many times, to sometimes still do. Um, and I know for sure that when you play Ring and Run, nobody ever. You don't have seven people running towards the door. You keep your distance. <laughs> you keep way, your yeah. distance. And one person run, rings and you run away. And but time after time, they're all running to look at the <laughs> eerie, scary, mm. terrifying, the stuff yeah. of nightmares. It's so I changed space, it. And it's exact space as well, right? Yes. Cheeky little demonic faces from all of them, really. <laughs> <laughs> and so I changed it. Black and white photograph taken in Paris 1934. And then it gets something a bit more uh, mm. realistic, lifelike, and yet they're still running towards the doorbell. And they've taken yes. doorbell. It seems to me that Dali doesn't know what a doorbell is. It's taken it to be literally, literal in each yeah, case. So there's a physical bell on the door in every <laughs> single case. Oh, yeah. yeah. Isn't that weird? Didn't see that. Video. Human, yeah. So let, I think, so I was moving on to this one here. We, we're going to show everyone how to do this. Um, and this was the, the video I made. This is the final image we're looking at. This is the image on the book. Um, this little boy, I think it's such a great image for the cover of this book of humanist photography. This little boy who is, um, you know, in a state of delight, bending over, looking at this little stream of water flowing through the gutter in the street on his own is just his new world. I don't know if you can see his little face of delight there, his eyes wide and his mouth open in amazement. I love this photograph. And we used this for the basis of a lesson plan in the Lesson Stream membership. And so I was wondering, you know, what could we, how could we um, use DALI? Now I'm going to share my screen here and um, share screen and uh, window and open... Bear with me. Bear with me. Here it is. Share. Okay. Can everybody see this now? That's the Dali we know and love, right, Steve? Mm-hmm. That's the one. So, what, so this is f- absolutely free. Okay. This is this is this is us showing you and demonstrating it. Now, Dali is created by OpenAI. That's the same company that um, developed Chat GTP. Um, it's been in the news a lot recently because of its uh, CEO or its founder, Sam Altman, who's been playing a game of tennis, or he's been the ball, rather. He's been the tennis ball, and they've been playing tennis with him between Microsoft and chat and OpenAI, and he's back. And um, because of the, the association with Microsoft, you can either buy it or you can go to Bing. Bing is um, the search engine a Microsoft search engine. So it's basically Google for Microsoft. It was always the, the kind of people used to make fun of Bing because it was a bit rubbish. But Bing has gone into a partnership with OpenAI, 
chat GTP is integrated into it as is um, DALI. So let me just show you here. I'll just go to Bing. If I go to Bing, Bing.com, here we are. This is what Bing.com looks like. Go to images, images, then go to create. And this is where we are. Okay, um, and you actually have to be signed in. So you need an Outlook or a Microsoft or an old Hotmail account for this. Um, and then all you do is you type into, it's not a search window because it's not searching, it's generating. And I've just typed into here, black and white photo, Paris 1930 boy, a little boy is alone standing on the pavement looking at stream of water running through the gutter. He is in a state of delight, eyes wide and mouth open in amazement. Um, so we've typed that in. Um, you see this little golden disc on the right-hand side. Every day you get 15 of those, so you're allowed to create 15 images quickly. It doesn't mean you can only create 15. When your 15 tokens run out, you can still create them, but very slowly. So let me press create here on the right-hand side. And you can see the thinking bar the generating bar. Um, it's not instant, obviously, because this wonderful, this wonderful creation does take a few seconds, doesn't it? it and does. this is what we've got. <laughs> oh. one, one so, <laughs> well, yeah, I think, I think I saw that too, Steve. <laughs> That's quite, we'll, we'll see that in just a moment. Now, I don't know what, to me, this is, this is why we, there is no, this is why humanist photography is humanist photography. This is just not right, is it? It's, it's, it's amazing, but it's not right. <laughs> you cannot recreate an image like the one that we saw in the front of this book. It's just, there's no subtlety going on here. Um, in each case, and this has happened several times before, for some reason, the little boy is always amazed at a stream of water running into the gutter, despite my care and attention to the, the, the prepositional phrase of running through the gutter, it still won't. I mean, this is not bad, I suppose, is it? But uh, it still doesn't capture that that image. It's just too perfect. This is <laughs> yeah. This is what you saw, isn't it? This is what that I saw. That was what you asked for. I didn't ask for this. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. And I don't know if you've seen this, Steve, but often if there's an image that, that Dali creates that is in any way kind of um, problematic or rude or mm. inappropriate, it'll give you a warning. You don't, yeah. do, you, do, you, do you see that warning sometimes? Mm. Yeah, for, for, and for lots of things, and, and actually not, a lot of the time you're not trying, I, I, I've never tried to create anything inappropriate, but yes, um, it, it, it does, it does, yeah, it does tell you to stop, and it warns you, it will ban you if you carry on, which I, is <laughs> fair enough. It's weird, I mean, you ask for things so, so innocently, and yet yeah. it says, I'm sorry, I can't show you the images that are inappropriate. And we say that it lacks human intuition, but in this sense, maybe it's got a dirty mind, which makes <laughs> Dali more human than we might have thought. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Who's to say? <laughs> so just uh, just to wrap things up here a bit, um, there's, uh, there's, here is, um, in fact, let me just drop that into the chat to make you um, to make it nice and simple for you. This is what you want. This is the direct link. Don't forget, in order to use it, you do have to have um, a Microsoft or Outlook account. Just set one up easily, um, and then you can um, generate 15 images per day. Um, it'll, you, it'll, you will get addicted to it. It will... Um, and um, also we have three, we have, I've got one more thing to show you in response to Dan's thing. There's, 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 we've got three lesson plans, well, we've got two lesson plans in Lesson Stream membership, which make use of DALI. The first one, AI picture telling, um, thanks to Steve's ideas. The second one is the metamorphosis, which I might, I'm hoping to go live with our friend Chris 
C.D. Rose, who is our doctor in literature, and he's going to be talking about that, which Alan is also, maybe he'd like to get involved too, because Alan um, was uh, had a little bit of a, something to say about this one, which I really liked. And um, this is the new one. We're working one called The Birthday, which is a reworking of a current. Uh, I just wanted to quickly show you something. Uh, Steve, what do you think? Anything to say? Anything to add? Um, no. I, all, I, all I would say... I, I know, I know. This is this kind of new, and it's new for everybody. Um, I think the just playing around with it. Um, students in a class will know this stuff way better than we do, um, and so get get an idea of of what it's what it's capable of doing. It, it almost it almost guides you off into into lots and lots of different areas. Um, I think. As I say, we, we started playing with it like this. I think there's there's loads and loads and loads of excellent English language uses for it. Um, you know, as, as we were saying earlier, in terms of um, fixing fixing the initial um, descriptions of it, actually making it grammatically correct, going back afterwards and doing that is is worth the time. Um, and then thinking about the stories behind the pictures. There, there's there's a certain um, a prequel and then a sequel to to each picture for definite. Um, so yeah, I think there's there's lots and lots and lots of things that can be done. Um, and it, as I said to you, it, it brings students into the moment, uh, particularly yeah. online in the one to one. It, they're, they're absolutely concentrated on this thing, um, and for a teacher, that's just a it's a, just a joy. Great. So last thing to say then. Um, these are all, this is the lesson stream membership. All the, those three lesson plans are three of 150 story-based ideas. There's a lot of lesson stream members present here today. It's always lovely to see you. Um, it's uh, price is $8.99 per month, $89.90 a year is a subscription. Link is below. It'd be lovely to have you join us in the community. If you're not sure, go on, join. And if it's not for you, there's a 21-day money back guarantee just drop me a line say it's not for you and uh, i'll give you your money back no questions asked um last thing this is for dan here's a text coming in um and uh this is i wonder if you can read this i was walking along a path with two friends i've put this into the chat uh, i was walking along a path with two friends the sun was setting suddenly the tie the sky turned blood red. I paused, feeling exhausted, and leaned on the fence. There was blood and tongues of fire above the blue-black fjord in the city. My friends walked on. I stood there trembling with anxiety, and I sensed an infinite scream passing through nature. And I wonder if you know the source of this text. I wonder if you know who wrote it. I wonder if you know where it came from. It's actually a diary entry. Does anyone do you know Steve? Any idea? There's a there's a there's a delay. This is what this is Monk. Monk wrote this. He was a very troubled man. Monk was, and this was a, a an image that was haunting him, which was the image that later became his iconic painting, the screen. And it's quite a famous little text that it's also um, been the basis of a lesson stream lesson plan, which I'd like to rework one day. And I've just typed, I've just taken that text and I have um, pasted it into Dali and look at what it's given us. Mm -hmm. I wonder what you think of this. And this is, would you say any of these images, Dan, if you're still there, can be connected with Monk's scream, maybe even compositionally? It's difficult to say. I do see it somewhere, actually, the composition anyway. Um, this one for sure um but whether or not it's been influenced i'm not too sure whether or not i recognize that text in any way i just don't know but uh yes interesting isn't it yes anyway i think we've taken we've gone over an hour we always try and get these to an hour but we have just gone just over an hour so steve it's been an absolute pleasure no, uh, thank you so much. It's it's um, it's been great to to share the stage with um, with a legend of the English teaching world. So uh, <laughs> so thank thank you very much. It's, it's been such fun. So thanks. It's thank great you. to have you in the community, and thanks so so much for finding the time to do that. I really mean it. It's been great no, and for your ideas. Fun.
Thank and you. for everybody, thank you to all of you for, for taking the time to spend this hour with Steve and me. And uh, there's always a 10 second delay. So when I hang up, you can still hear me, but I'm not actually here. So I'll take the opportunity. A big thank you in the chat uh, to everyone and a kiss. All right. Thank you to everybody. See you. Oh, be going this. I'll be going live again this time next week. Um, so I'll let you know in the in the, what, what, what it's all about. I'll be sending out an email. All right. Take care now. Thanks to you, Steve. Okay. Thank you. See you later. Bye bye. bye, -bye.